ओके सो आफ्टर डिस्कसिंग द प्री मेन सीक्वेंस एंड पोस्ट मेन सीक्वेंस रिवॉल्यूशन लेट मी टॉक अबाउट द अल्टीमेट फेट ऑफ स्टार्स एंड वेरियस सबस्टेलर ऑब्जेक्ट्स विद डिफरेंट मासेस राइट नाउ सो द लिस्ट गोस लाइक दिस द इनिशियल मास द फाइनल स्टेट एंड whether there is mass loss or not in the process and so final mass all during the end of the life so let's start with the case for planets we have already discussed but let me just revise this concept so planet initial mass is now all the masses are in terms of solar masses so initial mass is less than 0.01 initial mass planet again no mass loss during the formation next is the failed star brown dwarf right you must also know that all the brown dwarfs which have been formed till since the beginning of the big bang they are still brown more or less because ultimately what will they become they will just cool off and radiate ultimately they will become black dwarfs but the cooling off is very slow it happens very slowly so even during this so many billion years of age of our universe the black brown dwarfs which were formed even though maybe at the very beginning they are still not radiated away their energy so still now no black dwarfs have been formed okay so again for brown dwarf this is the mass range 0.01 to 0.08 and again no mass loss so for both these cases the mass is same as the end mass is same as the initial mass right now let's enter the regime of nuclear fusion so there is star formation right and after star formation the result will be what so basically what so if this is the hr diagram right so this is increasing luminosity this is increasing temperature so this is my main sequence now if this is the sun then this corresponds to 6000 degree kelvin right this is the sun and this is the white dwarf this is the super giants this is the normal giants and all that four main categories right now so Initially, we already discussed that it starts forming like this. Okay, so after that, it follows this path. This is the way of evolution. So from the main sequence, it will form like this. Go on. Now I am right now talking about this white dwarf region. So now white dwarfs can be of several types. the very most basic one is the one which has got mainly made up of hydrogen but is it correct that white dwarfs will only have hydrogen no why because a star what what is a star a star means that fusion must have happened there that means some helium must be there so even if for 5 minutes so some helium is produced and then there is no not much high temperature in the core so then fusion stops and ultimately it will become a white dwarf so at most the most simple case is the one where most of it is hydrogen very small helium and that is what we call a very basic white dwarf right <coughs> but now here let me talk about helium white dwarf what is that A helium white dwarf is one which is mainly made up of helium. So most of it, I am assuming that the mass is such that most of the hydrogen has converted into helium. So very less hydrogen is there. So the initial mass, if it is around in this range, then we will have helium white dwarf. And see, mass loss has started. Some mass loss will be there. It is greater than zero point zero eight. solar masses now let me go to a little higher initial mass say 0.25 to 0.8 our sun is in this range sun is one solar mass right so here we will talk about white dwarfs which are made up of mostly carbon and oxygen so this is called carbon oxygen white dwarf 
right again the mass loss is greater than 0.08 now again the later stage is oxygen neon magnesium white dwarf that means white dwarfs which are made up of mainly oxygen neon and magnesium now they have got little bit higher masses even iron they have got the highest masses okay so this was the white dwarf and here you see the mass loss is much more but still less than 1.4 solar masses so for the first time the mass loss is more than one solar mass this is important keep this in mind now so this is the case for white dwarf now what about this plot after white dwarf is the mass of the initial phase is much larger then there will be supernova explosion and then what will happen either a neutron star or a black hole right so we will have basically supernova which will either leave a neutron star or a black hole now we know that for neutron star the initial mass will be lesser than that of black hole what is the range 10 to 40 solar masses and what is the mass loss the mass loss is in the range 1.4 to 2.2 so remember this for neutron star the initial mass this is very important is in the range of 10 to 40 and the mass loss is between 1 to 2 roughly and for the case of supernova which leaves a black hole <coughs> the initial mass is greater than 40 the more the better <laughs> okay and in this case again the mass loss is greater than or equal to 5 solar masses so this is very important this chart because normally we say there is this formation some mass loss is there so how much mass loss is there a relative comparison i have done for all the various scenarios you will find that there are roughly seven such scenarios right starting from planet brown dwarf helium three types of white dwarf and neutron star and black hole Okay. Any question? Sir, one point four. Jahan thak be tahan sir thare neutron star hai. Pura puri jahan one. Which one? Now this is the mass loss. I am saying during the formation, during the supernova. Okay, how much mass loss has happened? Something like that. This is the range for formation to neutron star. Of course, what about the other masses? This is loss during the supernova in itself otherwise how can we equate this to so white dwarf formula for mass loss is there much lesser white dwarf formula brown much lesser brown dwarf no mass loss no fusion there is no fusion in this case so this is no fusion case these are fusion cases okay lesser mass higher mass so everything goes as increasing mass and this is all we can show this in the HR diagram okay okay so Hrithik is asking me why this is a brown planet no brown dwarf it's a name and why this is not a brown planet again this is just a brown planet but you have to remember that there is a difference between these two objects this is much smaller in size and this is much bigger also if you think about it here the material in the white brown dwarf is very much diffuse gaseous type of structure think about the largest planets that you know it's jupiter is it solid no it's gaseous so brown dwarfs have masses more than Jupiter. It will be entirely gaseous. Whereas planet like Earth, is this gas? No, solid structure. So the structure is very different. Also, the energy content in the brown dwarf is much larger. So why? Because gravitational contraction, the temperature in the core is very high, right? Although the temperature is not high to initiate nuclear fusion, but it is still very high so that the entire stuff is glowing due to energy being radiated or energy being released due to gravitational contraction. 
right? So this is the reason for being known as brown dwarf. Now, if there is no nuclear fusion, what will happen? Slowly, the gravitational due to contraction, slowly the energy will be dissipated away until the time when there is hardly any energy left. And then what will you see? Nothing. There is no light coming out, so it will become a black dwarf. What about planet? Planets are different. They don't have any source in itself. Say for example our Earth. The Earth's core is very hot. But it is not such that it is very much opaque, the core. The energy from the core is not being released in, out of the atmosphere. See, when there is night, there is night. There is no light out there. Because although the core is highly energetic, okay, because of the opaque nature. Also, you must remember that it is electromagnetic force, which basically is important in the defining the structure of a planet, chemistry, electromagnetism, atoms, molecules, how they form, how they bond. This defines the planet structure. Whereas it is gas dynamics, which is defining the structure of a brown dwarf or very large planets like Jupiter. Now for the case of again another black structure, black hole. It is just opposite. It eats away everything. It is not giving away anything, so it is black. In that way, neutron star is also very much black. But again, there are many types of scenarios, very interesting physics happening out there, out due to which it radiates. Sometimes particles, electrons, ions and many other things. So, even though not in photon spectrum, but in some particle spectrum, you will see stuff coming out of neutron star. But you will not see anything from that of a black hole. So only two objects I have talked about black. One is brown dwarf which will eventually become black and the existence of black hole. Now in our universe there are so many. So if you look at the night sky from the earth right now. What do you see? Have you tried it? Just Google the night sky, you see very interesting pictures. Our, uh, our eye is not much, not that sensitive. And also there is so much light pollution outside. So if you go to mountains and try to see the night sky, in a very clear sky, you will see a patch. patch. And what is that patch? Milky Way. Our own galaxy, Milky Way galaxy. Milky Way. So you will also see so many stars out there. Okay. Now, at this moment, we are in Earth. Okay, and Earth is revolving around Sun, and other planets are also revolving around the Sun, and this entire system is a solar system. And this entire solar system is revolving around the center of the Milky Way galaxy. What is in the center? A supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A star. Right? Okay, but here the story doesn't end. Now, if you just zoom out of the Milky Way, you will see that eventually the Milky Way is revolving around some other star system or maybe it's an open gravitational system where so many galaxies are moving around each other. So you see, the stuff never ends. It's just relative. Milky Way is also revolving around each other. So the nearest galaxy to Milky Way is what? Andromeda. Andromeda galaxy. Andromeda. Very nice. So many, after so many billion years, there are predictions that Milky Way and Andromeda will collide. Okay? Now, if you look closely, you will see that Andromeda galaxy has got two satellite galaxies. Just like Earth has got a satellite moon, similarly, Andromeda galaxy has two satellite galaxies which are revolving around Milky Way, with, uh, around the Andromeda galaxy. And each of the satellite galaxies has so many billions of stars, so many types of solar systems. Each star has, must have got some sort of system, some sort of planet, whether habitable or inhabitable. Okay, so this is so very fascinating. So the story never ends. So if you remember from the earth, when you look at the night sky, you will only see stars and very far away you will see galaxies. But if you suppose somehow, if you zoom out of the earth very far, if you leave the Milky Way, then you will only see galaxies out there. Just like we see so many stars, there you will only see galaxies. It's very interesting. 